All right, I know we're halfway through the year, but a lot of the world has started to open up again for creators to actually start working on client projects. But now you guys aren't just trying to work on projects, you're trying to get that bread, fam. You're trying to make them peas, bruv. Here, you're trying to get all the things that mean currency into your bank account in 2022. In today's video, I have five ways that you can do that. Now, first thing is actually going to be developing relationships and starting off getting retainer clients. Now, if you guys are new to retainer clients, essentially what that means is that you're gonna be giving a monthly or a quarterly sum of money in order to to get a predetermined amount of deliverables at certain times throughout the year. Now, what that does is not only give you a guaranteed income, but it also functions as a base. You're going to be able to go into your next project at higher budgets and demand higher price points because there's no longer financial FOMO that if you do say no to this one gig, that you're actually going to lose out on money in the long run. Essentially what happens is once you have set a foundation, you're going to have a newfound confidence in terms of dealing with client conversations in which you're not gonna have to undervalue yourself just to get that next gig. Now I hear you, vertical video isn't the most fun thing in the world. It means that we have to turn our high quality cameras vertically and start taking information from the sides of our image just in order to satisfy our clients, but make vertical video work for you. Now what you can do is you can start adding short form vertical video to the product offering that you have for your businesses, your clients, or any of the different types of projects you're going to be taking on. Because there's such a high demand for vertical video and short form content, you're going to be able to create a high value service. And to be fair, you might actually have to do a lot less effort in order to do that. And things that are going to be low friction, but higher value means that there's going to be more income for you, but a lot less stress in the long run. Number three is running at your camera gear. Cause if you're shooting every single day, then I have no idea why you're watching this video in the first place. You're gonna have off days when you're shooting. You're gonna have days where you're probably not gonna press record at all for the entire day. And that's an opportunity for you to make an extra income by renting out your camera gear. Now, if you've watched previous videos on this channel while I was talking with the Red Komodo, the entire month I had that my Sony FX6 was on loan. And while it was on loan, the rental company not only gave me a set of camera and lenses, but it actually made an extra $1,000 that month just renting out the FX6 and using my backup camera instead. And number four, and this one's happening while I'm recording this video, and that's digital product. As you progress in your career and you're sharing things on social media platforms like YouTube or Instagram or Vimeo even, you're gonna get asked about different things that you use in order for you to produce the images that you have or even acquire the clients that you do. Once you create a digital product, it's up forever until you take it down from your store. And people that are interested in your workflow and your process will actually buy the products that you use for your workflow, which means outside of the creation of the original digital product, once it's on your website, people can purchase those and use them for the things that they need to do. During this recording, I think I made about 60 bucks just selling digital products that are going on in the background while I'm doing other things. They're great because you're gonna develop systems to make your workflow easier and other people want to purchase parts of that workflow in order for them to do the same for themselves. Lastly, and it's gonna be a little bit tough, but it's coaching and mentoring creators that don't know as much as you do and don't have the experiences that you do. Now, this is a little bit hard because it does have an imposter syndrome effect where you feel like you're not good enough to share information to other people to the point where they'll actually pay you to sit down for an hour or half an hour on a regular basis in order for you to help them through some of their creative endeavors. Now, what I found is once I let go of that idea that I don't know enough to be able to share that with somebody else, I started to accept that I have a unique skill set and unique set of experience and things that some people just might not encounter or might not learn from. And the way that I thought about it is when I was a personal trainer years ago, I started from nothing. I didn't have clients necessarily that I was able to go into the gym and train. I had to start from somewhere. I had to start from zero and start with zero clients and just use the knowledge that I did have. And those people saw results, but they also wanted to pay for that knowledge because they didn't have it themselves. And the same thing works with mentoring and coaching other creators that might not be as far along as you are. Now that to be said, you have to be a little bit careful with this because you don't want to be a snake oil salesman and just rip off other processes and systems from somebody else and rehash in order to make a buck. But you also want to make sure that you're giving valuable information that that person could use in their workflow that they otherwise wouldn't have found by traditional means. I've been using Superpeer for the last little bit to help consult and coach other creators that are a little bit newer or don't have as much experience. And not only are they learning a lot from it, but they actually find the value of the knowledge that they're getting is pretty fair in terms of the price that you're being asked. Now those are five ways, but I got one more and that's actually making yourself available and hiring your services out to other productions and other directors that know way more than you. 
in the last year have actually offered service in terms of BTS or just helping on set for other productions and other directors that know more than me in the filmmaking space for twofold. One, you make a little bit of money. And two, you actually learn valuable insights and gain even more valuable experience that you can use in your workflow, which ends up giving you more money in the long run. And treat this just like a job that you offer your skill set in exchange to help somebody else out and you actually will end up getting paid for it, or you'll get recommended for new gigs that'll help increase your income directly. That being said, that's five, six ways that content creators in 2022 can make some extra income outside of your normal traditional shooting patterns. Now leave a comment down below. What are some of your valuable tips in terms of making money as a freelance creator? And we could start sharing that information with each other and start learning and how to make the most out of our careers and progress ourselves further as creators. That being said, I'm out of here. See you later. Thank you.